Well, now we're in the fly fishing season and flies are becoming expensive to buy. Um, you might be interested in taking up fly tying yourself. Um, and if you know nothing about it, or very little about it, then it might be worth just having a look at, at capes. They're becoming particularly expensive. And, uh, and of course, as you tend to buy them on the internet, rather than rummaging through a box in your local angling shop, uh, it, you really need to know what you're looking for. And what I thought I'd do today is just have a, a rummage through my boxes <laughs> and see. I'd rake out a few examples of what I've got and, and point out what, what I look for uh, when I'm buying capes. It's very much a case of you get what you pay for in this uh, cape buying business. Um, some of them are very, very expensive, but really you want a, a sort of average. I mean, you can pay over £100 for a, a quality cape, but it doesn't mean to say that the flies you tie are going to catch any more fish. Um, and they're mainly for people who are demonstrating fly tying on, on the internet or people who enter competitions such as you get in the, the magazines for the best tied fly. There are three main suppliers of these. This one on the left here comes from India. It's an Indian cape. This one is a Chinese cape and this one is a genetic cape. You can see the difference there. The, these Indian birds tend to be produced for meat and this is a little sideline which they have. To do with the Chinese. The thing about the Chinese capes is you'll notice they've got a much longer neck part there. And these are produced mainly in America, but you, they are produced in this country now, uh, especially for fly tying. There are two main types. There's the, what they call a neck cape, and this is one of them. This is where the head of the bird was, and this runs down the back of the neck of the bird. And the hackles on these tend to be quite short and stiff. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Underneath this, on the bird, is what they call a saddle. So if I hold that up there, you can see just how stiff those, those hackles are there. This is a, a saddle cape. If I just hold that up there, you'll see just how the you can see how they're they're much longer, and uh, these are used for tying streamer patterns or lure patterns. This is a genetic cape, a genetic saddle. You see how much more flexible they are. And they're much bigger, they're much uh, So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for lots and lots of quality five feathers near the top of the neck. Sometimes they're quite sparse and sometimes they they tend to be misshapen or curved. 
So that's a nice, uh, a nice cap. Indian cap. As you can see, they all tend to be quite short. But good enough for tying flies here. We tie in this area, and I suspect worldwide, are uh, small. A size 14s, 16s, and 18s here. Sometimes a 12 um, for a biggish nymph. And so when you buy a cap, you're looking for feathers which match the hook. So most feathers on a cap are just meaningless. <laughs> the ones you're looking for are the small feathers near the top of the neck. And the longer they are, the better. With Indian capes, they tend to be quite short. But they're, they're, they're fine, uh, if you, as long as you're not tying, tying cling hammers. Um, but you want lots of them, otherwise it's a complete utter waste of money to buy a cape with just a few. And they want to be evenly matched on both sides. Sometimes you get them with shorter fibres on one side than on the other. And some caps come from hens, and some caps come from cockerels or roosters. And there are big differences between the two. This is a cock cape, and you can see that they, they're quite springy and shiny, the feathers. And these are the feathers we use for tying dry flies. They've got much stiffer fibres on, so they stand up on the water better. This is a hen cape. The fibres are much softer. And these tend to be used for tying wet flies. This is a genetic cap. There aren't as many feathers on it. You can see they're quite spaced out, quite sparse. But the quality of, of the feathers is superb. You'll notice that they're very, very long. And therefore you can get more turns on the, on the fly. This is a, a Mets grade three. <laughs> this is a cock -cock. you can see how stiff they are. And shiny. And there's another genetic cap. You can see the quality of the, the feathers on there. Very, very long. You can see how they, some of them are on this cap. They're all right for tying flies, but they're a little bit bent. And the fibre tends not to be even on both sides. They're all right, but you could get better. Well, whether it's Indian, Chinese or genetic, depending on your, your budget, what cape should you buy? Well, if you're intent on buying a particular flies, then obviously the pattern tells you what, uh, what, what feather you need. Um, but in general, feathers I found which have a a black centre uh, are very very useful. 
Because when you wind the hackle onto the um, onto the hook, the black centre tends to make for a, a dark patch in the middle, which looks like a thorax. And they come in many different shades. You've got this one here, which is black and white, and therefore not unusually is called a, a badger. This is a Chinese badger cape. This one you can see is much darker. Very dark brown. It's called a furnace, a furnace cape. And this one with a ginger colour is a greenwell cape. It's used for tying greenwells, which are a very, very popular fly in this part of the world. These are three other very useful colours. This is black. Useful for tying things like hawthorn flies. They're usually dyed white capes. You can see there that the skin is dyed black. You get that nice natural black. It tends not to look anywhere near as good. This one is an iron blue dun. Iron blues are little small ephemeropteras, little small upwing flies which you get on our waters here in the north of England. And, and trout just absolutely love them. But it's probably the most difficult colour to get. And I've had no end of, of caves which claim to be iron blue dun which are Nothing like this. This is as close as I've managed to get. An iron blue dun cape, which is very close to that colour there. <laughs> then get it. Unfortunately, when you send away for these things and they, and they arrive, then they're, they're nothing like this at all. And I'll show you one in a minute. This is a, just a blue dun, a very, very uh, popular colour on flies. This is a genetic cape. You can tell by the quality of the, the hackles there. As I say, you get what you pay for in this business. With with these genetic capes, uh, there are so many feathers on it, they last you a lifetime or more. And you can buy half a cape quite often. Um, you can find a cape which has been cut in half. Or you can buy one between you and then cut it in half yourself. So when you buy a, a full cape, you get lots of hackles you can usefully use. I mean, from about there down over, you'd probably only use them as streamers. So they're useful. Hackles are here, near the top end. Small ones. Just two things here. First of all, iron blue duns I sent away for what were labelled iron blue dun cock feathers, and uh, this is the packet that came back. All the feathers are far too big. You could, there's nothing you could tie with those feathers at all. You you could use the the fibres for for tails or throat hackles, but the rest of it is is, is useless. And uh, you can see there that's totally different colour to this. They're almost black. The reason they're called iron blue is because it's that blue colour you get when you heat iron and then quench it. You don't often see it now, you used to see them at the blacksmiths when blacksmiths were making shoes or some other iron mongery. And you could see that iron blue colour which you which you get when it's cool cooled down. And that's what you're looking for.
So if you want to tie really small flowers, this is a size 20. This is an Indian um, feather, Indian hackle. You see, you get, you get very little, and even then the, the fibres are too big. And this is the smallest hackle from that uh, from that cape. This is a similar fibre length, but this is from a Chinese cape. And again, you get uh, slightly more. This is from a genetic cape. You can see the, the difference there. Many more fibres of the right length. So a tiny small flies and a genetic cape is where you want to be. This is a size 14. It's the, probably the most popular size. This is from an Indian cap. See the, the size of the fibres there just about match that hook. But you don't get very many of them. You probably get maybe a couple of turns, maybe three if you're lucky. This is a from a Chinese cape, slightly longer. Again, you can see the and more fibres on the feather. And this is from a genetic cape, and there you can see the difference. Many, many more. If you tie in cling hammers, of course, then we well, need at least five turns on the parachute of the cling hammer, or probably more, six or seven if you can get them. Then obviously you can't tie those with Indian or Chinese cap feathers. You need these hackles from the genetic caps. Professional fly ties, as their name suggests, they tie flies for a living. They have to make money out of it, and therefore they tie the most popular flies in the most popular sizes. The thing about tying your own flies is you can tie them to whatever size you wish. And usually the smaller sizes, certainly up here in the north of England, are the ones we're looking for. And uh, in shades that match the, the fly on the river. So tying your own flies is uh, it's a very useful thing to do. It's very, very enjoyable as well. And as I've said before, there's nothing quite like catching a fish on a fly you've tied yourself. Especially the first time, it's a, it's a great moment. Well, I'm not sure whether that helps or <laughs> has confused you even more. But anyway, that's just my little insight into what I know about capes. Uh, yeah, I hope you found it useful. Tight lines. Goodbye.